is, if I get all this right here, uh, Air Rifle Sumatra, imported by Air Venturi, 25 cal. Now, I always get these things confused because it's Sam Yang, Sumatra, Career. Um, I just call everything the Korean gun for, you know, because I just got to get lost with all the different names. Um, InGen, I think that's the pellets. But anyways, this is the Korean uh, 25. And it's the lever action, double tube. Uh, some guys like single, some guys like double. Double is a bit heavier. Does have a lot more weight to it. Uh, you're cycling it. You know the lever action comes down. This lever's got to be all the way forwards, and you can pop it out. Uh, there's a little tiny catch here on the side, so if you don't have it all the way back like this, it's going to hang on you. Now, I'll show you in a close-up how I put the slugs in here. This is a 25 cal, 22, same same issue. When you have a regular pallet, you know, the skirt is flared. So when you stick that in, you know, it's always back forwards. Generally, you give it a little push, and it's not going to go anywhere. You can keep it in your pocket, okay? Um, but when you have a slug, all right, let me push that out. All right, solid slugs don't have a flared skirt, so you can't press fit them. So what I'm finding is if you drop your slug in there and just give it a little bit of a push, okay, now it's going to stay in place. All right, there's a pellet. There's a little bit of slug. Now I've been playing with these, so they're a little bit worn down now because I've been pushing on them. Um, just different cal, you know, different weights here. But just a little bit of a push, you know, and usually they stay. All right, I'm not giving this because I'm trying to look at this through the camera lens. And I'm actually making myself seasick. Give that a snug. All right. And the reason I'm saying to do this is because they do, since they are flopping around in there okay when you cycle the magazine if this isn't pushed in if it's a little bit loose that nose is going to kind of smush up against the wall as it's cycling and you want your nose to be fresh you don't want it to be bent or, or, or mushed the other issue is is when guys are making it cycle if it's facing down, you can cause a jam where this could kind of fall a little bit outwards as you're cycling, and you don't want it to jam in your gun. So just giving it a little bit of a push will keep it locked in place. You know, should be able to carry it in your pocket. But this is a little close up here. All right. And again, I'm getting a real kick out of this because I'm able to shoot my 57 grain. HP's in here with just devastating results. Um, of course, you know that there's the power dial right here. So, small, medium, and large with the dots, red being, you know, or, or low, medium, high, but the dots are small, medium, large. And I've got it spun all the way to the high. You know, I'm shooting heavy slugs, no sense in goofing around. I'm not looking for air consumption. Uh, but at the moment, with a 3,000 PSI fill, I'm shooting at least around, you know, somewhere around 10 shots before I've got to fill it back up. You know, we're down to 2,000 from 3,000. Um, it's, it's a double tube, so it's a little heavier than a single tube. Um, get, you know, all the way down, all the way back. And what I'm telling most guys, to keep the nose of your slugs from getting jammed up, um, if you're not going to wedge them into the magazine so they sit tight, Whenever you cycle the rifle, keep the nose pointing upwards. That way, you're not like this. The slug isn't kind of falling through, and it's not going to get dinged up or jammed uh, because they're not tight in there. As I've shown 
a regular pellet's got an oversized skirt, so it's a press fit that goes in. This, you know, with a solid slug, it's really hard to do a press fit. Um, you know, and stay within the diameter because the hole in the magazine is larger than the diameter in the barrel. We've been through this numerous times, many, many years we've been talking about this, uh, 22 and the 25. Um, it's just the way they are. Now, let me show you something else that I got kind of get a kick out of. Um, anyone knows if they've tried to put a suppressor on these Korean guns, the little threaded barrel nub sticking out is never long enough to deal with something on there. There's just no room betwixt the barrel and your air tube. So I went to Donnie Fly's website and he's got an adapter on there. And I don't know what the metric threads on the, on the, on the gun is, but it's a half by 20 on the OD. And I had a little suppressor. That I've had this for years. I forgot who made this. Um, but it works perfect for this. And there's nothing I like more than toning down the sound. Um, doesn't affect the accuracy at all. Uh, very spot on. This is an extremely accurate gun. It's just a bit cumbersome. You know, it's just a bit cumbersome. But if that doesn't make a difference to you, you're ready to rock and roll. Um, I'm just really jacked about the power that this thing has. Now granted, it's got a little piddly scope on there, but that's no big deal. I can always swap that out with something bigger. Uh, but this is extremely powerful 25 cal. Make sure your backstop. If you're shooting up in the air at a squirrel, this is a lot of overkill for a squirrel, especially with 57 grains. But if you're shooting a coyote, groundhog, um, even small pigs and whatnot, uh, this will do some severe damage on this. Um, now again, it's winter time, so I don't have a lot of, well I said before, uh, what I'm playing with right now, and I'll have to do a close up, that's uh, my 57 grain, uh, 257 hollow point, and what I've done is I've sized it down to uh, 252, and it fits just perfect inside the magazine so the nose isn't sticking out. And we just snug it in there a little bit so it's not rattling around. And it does real nice job. Real nice job. This little baby right now, uh, on shot number one, was 905 feet a second. All right. On the old pyramid air calculator, that's 103 foot pounds. So we're averaging easily 100 foot pounds with this 57 grain. Uh, well, it's hard to see, but, uh, you know, I'll do one of those uh, space alien close-ups. But uh, I'll put a picture in there so you can see it. Now, what I did is I shot some ballistic gel just to see what happens. And you can see it right here. The gel don't lie. We're looking at a good seven inches of penetration, and these little these little hollow points mushroom back perfectly. Uh, really, really, really happy with this. Um, kind of surprised on all this because, you know, I usually like to have the right caliber cast, you know, in the right di you know the diameter. I'm not you know massively sizing down, but. Uh, Again, I haven't played with the 25 in a while, and I wanted to see what else we could do with it. Now that I have my hands on one, uh, you know, it's, this is part of the fun, experimenting and goofing around. In the beast. Now, you see I'm all over the place because I was sighting it in, playing with the suppressor, doing a lot of stuff. So, kind of ignore this, ignore this, ignore this. Now that it's all buttoned up, you know, bada bing, bada boom, bada bing. Look at that. That, that. I mean, these are just, you know, pit in the ace there. Um... Granted, at 100 yards, I have no idea what I'm going to be doing. 
but that is tight. So, and again, that's with the 57 grain hollow point. Size down uh, to 251, 252. Some guys like different diameters. Uh, I get calls all the time. I believe this is best. I believe that is best. Um, I do whatever you want. Okay, enough of cardboard. So, with that said, that's about the end of it. Uh, like I said, it's just a short little thing. Um, during the winter time, I'm going to be playing with the ballistic gel, just trying out different slugs, showing you what we're coming up with. Um, got so many I can shoot out of this 25. Uh, but, you know, I'm always trying to push the envelope and how big can we go, still retain accuracy, and get as much downrange energy as possible. So with that said, Mr. I will point out, and make sure you guys hit the air gun shows when they come into your neighborhood. You'll have a lot of fun, meet a lot of good people, and get all your questions answered. Plus, there's a lot of quality deals going on at those shows. A lot of good deals going on. Till then, take care.